What up, everybody? It is Dennis and Andy with your movie review for the week. Uh, last night, we went and saw If, capital I, capital F, If, uh, written and directed by John Krasinski, uh, starring Ryan Reynolds and uh, some little girl whose name I don't know, but I bet Dennis does. I do. Kaylee Fleming, who I love. She was in... Uh... Force Awakens, and more importantly, Walking Dead. So was glad to see her come back and see her. Damn, right you know Ooh. what? I knew. Okay, so Force Awakens, I I don't remember well enough. But Walking Dead, oh, my God, she's Rick's daughter. I know yes. I recognize her. Yes, this picture with the big hat on, and I have been dying to see her in something where she's in the lead, and this is definitely her chance to shine. She was just fantastic, adorable. But before we go any further, what's the movie about, big guy? Why, if you haven't seen the trailer, this is, there's um, Kaylee. She plays a girl named B who goes through a very difficult experience uh, in her life and begins to see everyone's imaginary friends who have been left behind since their real life friends have grown up. And she makes it her goal to try and connect the uh, ifs, the imaginary friends, with new hosts, new kids. That's right. Um, yeah, so uh, we're not doing any spoilers like we usually do. You know, this will be non-spoiler. And then we're not going to put the graphic up and then do spoilers because it, it really is a nice, heartfelt, you know, kind of tug at the heartstrings uh, movie. It is PG, you know, take kids to it. Uh, my daughter thought it was great. You know, somebody, there were a couple kids in the theater, so you can definitely take kids to see it. Uh, I didn't realize John Krasinski was in it too. I thought he just wrote and directed it, but he plays uh, her father in it. So I thought that was cool. He's not in it a lot, but he's in it enough. Um, but it is basically centered around, obviously, the girl and uh, Ryan Reynolds' character, who, you know, when you meet him, he he comes across as the guy who's, you know, the human whose job it is to uh, match up the ifs, the retired ifs, with, you know, new kids and stuff. Yeah. And um, so the this movie was either going to succeed or fail based on Kaylee Fleming's portrayal because this movie really is about her charisma, her story. Ryan Reynolds is a great co, you call it a co-host. Um, John Krasinski as the dad. They all have their great moments. Um, um, Fiona Shaw plays the grandmother. She's great in it. Yeah. And it, for those of you guys that saw the trailer, everybody was expecting Steve Carell, of course, was, was blue and he was adorable. Um, and, you know, they, this movie had so many absolutely fantastic uh, actors in it. And you knew it watching. You can even see it on the thumbnail there. The hard part was for fun. You're always trying to match up. Which character had whose voice, and, and you tried to do yeah. it. I got quite a few of them, but there were a few that I definitely didn't pick up on. But um, the movie starts off, um, in my mind, it was a little slow. Um, no, you're right. I was. It's so funny. We're thinking alike. It definitely did start slow. Um, but... but it, it was necessary in order to it set was. up all the stuff that yeah. happens later on. So it was an important slow start. And I think the setup was good for it. Yeah. And it wasn't like it was the movie's an hour, 45 minutes, I believe. Yep. And it wasn't like, you know, the first 40 minutes or anything. I mean, they got through what they had to pretty quick, but you know, it's one of those things where you're watching it and you're thinking, oh, no, is this going to be the tone throughout the whole movie? Because then it's going to drag. But, you know, they got through what they had to with, the, you know, visual exposition, we'll say, the setup, uh, her 
uh, her childhood and stuff uh, to get her to the age because she's she plays a 12 year old. I think she's actually older than that, but she yeah, plays she a 12 year old. Huh? Yeah, she was. I think she was 12 when she was in like Walking Dead. So yeah, that's um, what I thought too. Yeah, no, she uh, um, it, it, it started off with a darker tone than I was expecting because it's setting up the tragedy that has befallen. They do some explanation of it, what happened in the past briefly, but they really are focusing in on the current situation with her dad. And that is the focus of the ultimate subplot of, of this outside of dealing with all the ifs. Yeah. And I mean, this isn't a big spoiler. She, you know, she takes place in New York and, you know, her dad has to have a procedure done. We'll just leave it at that at the hospital. So during the day, she's got lots of free time. So it gives her that time after she meets up with uh, Ryan Reynolds character and, you know, the ifs and finds out what's going on with that to basically say, I want to be your assistant. I want to work with you. And he's like, oh, are you sure you want to do this? And she's like, yeah. So, you know, they go to like their retirement home for the ifs who don't have kids anymore. And that was just a really nice setting and a nice scene. Um, and then, you know, from there, they they go about the process of trying to reconnect. Yeah. And, uh, oh, you know, me with actors, I blanked on the actor's name. Uh, what was the, the first actor? Uh, let me, I'll get there. Overweight SNL, Bobby Moynihan. Oh, okay. The guy who played Jeremy the, <laughs> with yeah. his scruffy beard. Yes. Yeah, that's, that's right. Bobby Moynihan. Yeah, I that's him. yeah. He was in it, you know, recognized him right out of the gate. Um, for the small part he had, it was, it was nice. There was just a lot of, a lot of, I thought, touching moments in it. Um, and you know, it, the movie had heart is what it, it had. Bingo. That is exactly what, what this team needs is heart. Yes. I'm wearing a Jersey that specifically says that, uh, this team needs heart and this movie has heart. And that's exactly what I thought when this movie ended, you know, this is great for the kids. It, uh, the special effects were really good. The scenery yeah. The music that they had tied everything together beautifully in it. Um, you enjoyed getting to meet a lot of the little uh, ifs and, you know, trying to figure out some of their backstories. And when once this movie jumped in and you really started getting into the ifs, everything picked up. It was great. You were done with exposition. And this movie took off. It had quite a few very funny parts. And it also has some emotional roller coasters. So it was really, really decent all the way around. If you've got kids, this is a good movie for kids, but it also has themes for adults. And the adults yeah, pick say, up I on mean, a lot more of this. You know, the theater we went to wasn't packed, but it was more adults than it was kids. And, you know, this is a great movie for like a date night, you know? Uh, if you don't have kids, that's fine. It, it'd be a great date night movie. I think my wife would have really liked it. What do you think? You think Susie would have liked it? Yep. Yep. As a matter of fact, I guarantee it when we get back, if it's still out, I'll be seeing it with my niece, nephew, wife, probably sister-in-law. Oh, isn't that sweet? All right. Well, let's rate this puppy. Uh, I think it's your, it is. It's my turn, turn I first. Overall, I thought the acting was great. I thought the scenes, the story, the plot. Once you get through the first 10, 15 minutes of setup, it really starts to pick up. Uh, I thir I enjoyed it a lot more than I was anticipating, let's just say that. And uh, I, I'm going to give this one a CGC rating of an 8.0. I totally recommend. Um, this is a family movie. Take your whole family and go see it. It's one of the better movies that have been out this year. Yep. Uh, look at that. Just like last week, we were on the same page. I'm at 8.0 on it as well. Nice. Uh, same thing. It's just a very enjoyable movie. Uh, and it, 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 I, I love movies that have have a, a good story, nice heart to it. 
pulls at the heartstrings, you know, has the nice ups and downs going through the movie. Um, it's almost like, obviously, it's not based on a real story or anything, but it has that slice of life it does. type feel to it. Which I'm, I, I'm going to say for the average person, the average family, this will be great. My gut feeling is the critics won't like this movie just because this just feels like something the critics wouldn't like. But, um, well, you know, one of the things when it was over, I said to Dennis, I said, look at John Krasinski. He writes a movie like this, and then he also does A Quiet Place, which the third one of that's coming out soon. Yep. And it, just the range. I mean, Krasinski is just, who would imagine that guy from The Office would take yeah. this, you know, this path? So kudos for him. Um, are, yeah. I assume there's any I, rating yet or yeah, no? I'm just pulling him up. IMDb is giving it a 6.8. Not a lot of, uh, of ratings on it yet. So it's in its infinitesimal and Rotten Tomatoes. Critics are giving it a 56%. So the really? critics, yeah, like I said, I had a feeling the critics, there is no audience score as of this recording. So um, stay tuned. I think once again, we will, the, the, the ordinary people usually fall much closer to Andy and I. I got a feeling they will like it. Um, critics just kind of suck. Yeah, yeah. But you know what doesn't suck? Uh, Cordra at the Awakening by uh, Dennis and myself cruising along uh, 44,376 bucks 596 backers four away from 600 let's get there and do it Cordra is back uh, this tale picks up shortly after the first book ends uh, Vordoom the Undying was the big bad that was introduced at the end of the first book and now the story really heats up. Uh, who is basically going to get to these artifacts first? There's lots of action and adventure in this story. You can obviously click on the link below. Go check it out at your leisure. Scroll through it at your pace. There's a lot to look at here. Um, we have a new game module, of course, which I'll get to. Uh, the different variant covers. And stuff you can choose from, interior pages for you to look at, get a sense of the story and where it's going. Oh, new creatures and monsters abound. There's one right there. Um, do, 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 do. Just want to get down. There we are with the new game module. Uh, game module uh, version two, I think you would call it. Uh, and a cover by Bart Sears and Dan Lawless. Once again, they're back working together. They just do such a great job to give that nice retro feel to the covers that we're going for. Uh, let's see. Doo, doo, doo. Just want to scroll through this some more. We did bring back the T-shirts. Of course, the main Cordrath shirt. You'll see on the side here when you scroll down. The beanie is back as well. Oops, right there. And the main Cordrath shirt is back if you missed it the first time around. And we're doing a Adriana shirt based on Bud's variant cover that Dan Lawless cover, colored. Uh, it would match perfectly if you got the Lilineth shirt. So do that. These ship separately. So even if you've already backed the book and you're like, oh, doesn't matter. These are a separate uh, item the way they ship anyhow. So you can just go and grab it and do that. And, of course, once we hit 50,000, which we're getting close to, uh, the first stretch goal, which everybody will get, will be unlocked, which is the Vordoom playable character card featuring the big bad himself on one side by myself and Dan Lawless. And, of course, Dennis came up with some great stats on the back. So that'll be unlocked when we hit 50,000. We're getting there, guys. Sharing is caring if you've already backed it. Uh, great add-ons. Cordrath, the layouts. It's the layouts for the entire book, as you can tell. It's basically the pencils that I do. And you can see how tight I pencil before I start uh, putting ink down on the page. Uh, we've got... Oh, that's weird. 
There it is. I was waiting for it to load. We've got Cordrat the Reckoning in a nice handy little manga version. It's in black and white with the gray scale, just like a manga book is. And that is rated E for everyone. Went in, did some editing to it because we got feedback from people that bought it saying, God, I wish my kid could read it. Now they can. And if you want it in full color, we've got the color digest version as well. A little bit bigger than the manga one, still smaller than the actual graphic novel. That's E for everyone. We've got, of course, for the role players out there, the core draft minifigure. What about these, Dennis? Yep, we've got the two, three, and five inch. Uh, if you do any type of role playing and you use miniatures, which most of us do, you definitely are going to want the two inch one. Some people wanted a bigger version or a giant one to paint uh, for more like a statue. So we've got you covered on all three of them. They are just an add on. That's right. So get that added on. And then we've got the collector's box. Uh, you can obviously get that in the featured tier, which is the Awakening Box Bundle. It's the game module, the Adriana trading card uh, in all five books, the black and white edition and the four variant covers. You get them all and the collector's box. And then if you go way down to the bottom, we've got the big bundle which is everything from core draft the reckoning all six covers the first game module all four character cards the shattered reach map and everything on the awakening uh tier box bundle including all stretch goals once everything is said and done and uh the box here the reckoning also does include i always forget to mention it it does include the two digests as well, the manga and the color digest as well. So you get everything at a really huge discount. And uh, we've got a retailer tier, 10 books, great discount. Uh, and you pick the 10 covers that you want from the Awakening. And then if anybody wants to buy 25 of them, really big discount on that as well. And once again, you figure out how you want to break it up. So the link is in the description. Please check it out. Please back it. Give us your support. It's because of you guys that allow us to actually create this book. It's like you're the producers for a movie. Now, Dennis is going to tell you about this. This is a sign-up page for Cordrat, a Christmas Miracle children's book. Yep. Our sign-up page is uh, there. The description will be in the uh, link below. Um, we've got a really nice... 24-page uh, children's book, eight and a half squared. Um, great uh, Christmas uh, story. Um, it's going to be Christmas in July. And we're also going to be doing an activity book where it'll be the entire story, black and white, so you can color everything in, plus two great activities like little crosswords, um, dot to dots, word searches, things like that. This is where you get a little bit of the barbarian fun designed for kids of a young age just to be brought into the world that we are creating. It's a fabulous, fun time, and it'll be at your doorstep by Christmas. That's right. We're going to plan on shipping it out in November and launching it in July. So go check that out. Uh, thank you, guys. No movie review for the next couple of weeks. Dennis here is going to be out of town. Uh, so uh two week uh reprieve i guess from the movie reviews but they will return have no fear and thank you for joining us next wednesday i will be doing a show the dna show without the d it'll just be the a and uh, maybe i'll pull in a guest uh along with it so join me for that of course like subscribe and share we thank you all for watching and we will catch you later. Bye-bye, everybody. Oh.